Hello everybody, Mental Fox here with a game that nobody requested. Every once in a while, people will say, Ooh, what are you going to play next? What are you going to play next? Maybe you'll play this, maybe you'll play that. Nobody said anything about this game, and it makes me a little sad because I love Star Trek. I've loved Star Trek ever since I was young. I particularly like uh, the Next Generation era of Star Trek. And uh, honestly, the new Star Trek, Star Trek Discovery, uh, just doesn't do it for me. It just it just doesn't do it. It doesn't feel like Star Trek to me. I mean, it's good TV, but it's just not Star Trek. And then Star Trek Picard, I was super excited about. And I, there were some moments of the first two seasons that I liked, but overall, I did not care for those two seasons. But the third season, I actually really enjoyed. It was... It was Star Trek The Next Generation 2.0. That's all I really wanted. I just wanted the gang back together on the Enterprise. And, you know, that's that's all I wanted. So, um, I really enjoyed Season 3. So, this game here, it, it takes place after Star Trek The Next Generation. I've heard, I've heard it takes place after Star Trek The Next Generation and after Star Trek's The Next Generation movie. So, I'm not exactly sure where it fits in. But uh, I do know that um, there is at least one Star Trek The Next Generation actor who voices a character in this. I know that. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Uh, this game was done by, you can see in the upper right-hand corner there, uh, a, a studio called, oh, it just went away, uh, Dramatic Labs. There it is. Dramatic Labs. Uh, it's a group of people who used to work at Telltale Games and then Telltale Games folded. So a bunch of these guys started their own studio. I never played any of the Telltale Games games, uh, but I heard they were really good. Uh, and I've heard that the story in this one is really good. Uh, however, <laughs> uh, I've heard a lot of people, uh, I guess, complaining about the graphics. Like, people say, like, PS3 era level graphics. I don't care about that. I, I honestly don't. Uh, as long as it's fun to play and it's a good story, I'm in, man. Give me some... Give me some Star Trek. Just, just, I just can't get enough. I can't get enough Star Trek. Uh, so I, I'm going to play this. And if, if you watch it, I hope you enjoy it with me. And um, if you're not watching it, well, then I'm not talking to you then, am I? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I? I believe this is more like an interactive fiction kind of thing. I don't really know how much gameplay there's actually going to be. Uh, it might just be some point and clicks with uh, some choices made. I don't know. I really don't know what to expect. But I'm going to tell you one thing. On my system, my system is six years old. Uh, it has a, a Intel i7 7700K CPU in it and a GTX 1080 in it. And it's, like I said, six years old. I have no problem playing 1080p games. I, I, I just don't. And I don't have a 4K monitor, so I don't care to play in 4K. So my six-year-old system is fine. But this game, for reasons I don't understand, it, it takes 24 minutes to load. And I'm not even kidding, because I timed it. Uh, it, the, it I, I thought I just thought it was broken. Uh, you, you, it's only on PC. It's only available with the Epic Games launcher thing. Uh, so you know, I launched the game. It says it's running, but you have no indication that's running. If you look in the task manager, you'll see it in there, and you'll see that it's using up some CPU. So if you if you're patient, <laughs> and on my system, if you wait 24 freaking minutes. I hope I didn't say hours before. 24 minutes, uh, the game will finally load. So I'm I'm actually really worried that this game's going to crash on me because I've heard that it's not the most stable thing in the world. I'm worried it's going to crash on me and then I'm going to have to spend another 24 minutes waiting for it to load up. Hopefully that won't happen because that's nobody wants to spend their time doing that. But I want to I don't want to be too hard on the game. Uh, because, you know, the small independent studio, this is their first game. This thing was supposed to come out like a year ago, I believe. And they finally, it's finally out now. Uh, and I'm excited to check it out. So if you're a Star Trek fan, stick around. Uh, I heard that there's, it's even possible that if you're not a Star Trek fan, maybe this game could turn you into a Star Trek fan. I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, I'm going to hit play here. And like I said, I'm just going to hope, 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 hope that this game doesn't crash and that I can at least get a good hour out of it here so that I have a video to share with you guys. So if you're watching this, then you know that that was a success. All right, let's hit play here and get started with Star Trek Resurgence. Uh, let's pick an empty slot here. 
and begin. This is a Dramatic Labs adventure. The relationships and events you are about to experience will be shaped by the choices you make. That's kind of fun. Captain's Log, Stardate 57931.4. The crew is restless. After spending too many months piecing our ship back together, we're finally about to venture out on a new mission. And the crew isn't letting this unprecedented ion storm slow them down. They're ready for something different. I know I am. Perhaps more than any of them. Fortunately, nothing ever stays the same. It's entropy, the nature of the universe. Change is inevitable. And while entropy says order gives way to chaos, in this case, change is good. Our new first officer is en route to the Resolute. Jara Rydak. I know she'll bring a welcome dose of new blood to the crew. Oh, uh, oh, right trigger. What? I'm supposed to be using a controller with this? Okay, I don't even have a controller hooked up to my machine. <laughs> I had no idea I was supposed to be using a controller. Uh, I've got um, a mouse and keyboard here. Um, we'll see how this goes, and if I need to hook a controller up to it, I'll go dig one out. Let's see how this goes. Let's pick it up. Thanks. No problem. I, uh... I'm not great with flying. No. But these little shuttles... are the worst. Uh, and yet you joined Starfleet, so these are timed. You don't like flying, and yet, you join Starfleet. There's a reason I'm not a pilot. You should try it sometime. Okay, so he's gonna remember that, and I guess, I, I wonder if the green means it's positive? I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little anxious. I hadn't noticed. I'm on my way to my first assignment. When we get to the Starbase, I'm transferring on to the Resolute. So am I. It won't be easy for Jara to step in at the 11th hour like this. But if she's half the officer I knew she could become when she was a cadet at Starfleet Academy, she'll be the XO this ship needs right now. Check in at security. Oh, goody. WSAD to move. Uh, okay, so I guess this is our marker telling us where to go. We got uh, a little third person going on here. We can go walk back into the uh, shuttle. No, we can't. That, <laughs> that dude's just still sitting there. <laughs> Dude, you coming or not? <laughs> He's just going to sit there. Oh, okay. So I hit space uh, just to see if I could jump, but it looks like in this game, space is uh, kind of like your journal. Interesting. Uh, and an old Ensign Calloway is a member of our crew right now. Ensign Calloway was grateful for Jara's sense of humor when he was nervous on the shuttle flight. And that's who we are. We're, we're Jara. 
And so I guess he liked it when we were like, you joined Starfleet even though you're afraid to fly. He liked that. Well, that's good. Uh, it looks like there's another person we could play as here as well. Controls. Um, yeah, keyboard. I don't think that the game is going to let me change these. Otherwise, I would. I am not a fan of WASD. I'm not going to get into that. It seems to be a contentious subject. I will see if I can make do with WASAD. Uh, run is shift. Crouch is control. We got a tricorder. We got a phaser. Move the camera around. Interact. Aim. Uh, we got a couple tricorder modes. And we can pause the game if we want to. Okay. Modes. Oh, okay. So if we wanted to, I guess we could, um, what? Change the way... How do I... Uh, I don't know what these dots are down here. Exploration, you just move around. How do I get to the next screen? Doesn't it look like this is like... Like if I was on a, on a phone, I would swipe... I would swipe to go to the next thing, but I don't see how to get to the next thing. Okay, it's the arrow keys. So, you know, move around, control the camera, interact. Interaction points light up when you are close enough to use them. Press shift to run. If you stop moving, you'll switch back to walking. Running is not always allowed. No running around the pool. And crouch and crouch. Okay, I can do that. So this is going to tell us all about how to play the game. So there is shooting in this game. That's kind of cool. We'll, we'll get to these things. And then settings. So we got the settings right here. Okay, I can handle this stuff. Now I'm going to try not to hit escape because I heard that escape exits the game. Oh, look. That dude, um, he closed the freaking door to the shuttle. <laughs> He's like, leave me alone, I need a minute. Welcome to Starbase 128. Let's examine the livery. A starbase on the very edge of Federation space. Long way from home now. Yep. Starfleet Operational Support Services. Ooh, look at that view. See the shuttle over there? Come on, I don't think this game looks that bad. Good grief. I don't. Plus, I'm on a freaking space station. This is cool. Uh, Commander? I'm not usually such a nervous wreck, by the way. I actually did well at the Academy. Oh, yeah? Maybe you've heard of the Torvalon test? Sounds familiar. It's a tactical simulator that makes the Kobayashi Maru look like a picnic on Pintaris 5. Anyway, I finished in the top 20. Not just in my class. I, I mean, all time. In the history of the Academy. Well, that's very impressive. So, there's that. Really? That's quite impressive. Thank you. It was tough. But, you know, I set my mind to it and it paid off. Please place your hand here. Hold it there for a few seconds. Let's place our hand here. Scan our hand. Welcome, Commander Rydek. Wait, you're Jara Rydek? You absolutely crushed the Torvalon test. You, you finished in what, like the top three? That would be me. <laughs> Now I'm really... It, it's an honor to meet you, Commander. Sorry, hmm. I, I didn't realize before. Oh, I, I just came off the, the shuttle. The pleasure's mine. Be on solid ground. The pleasure's mine, Ensign... Paul Calloway. Good to meet you. I believe Commander Ermod is expecting you. He's in the concourse just ahead. See you on the Resolute. <laughs> he really did look worried, didn't he? <laughs> Let's see. Is, did anything change here? Uh, if we click on him. Uh, no, nothing new. No new uh, new settings here. This was kind of interesting, though. When we came to the screen, I don't know if you noticed that. Settings was highlighted, but we were actually on the Your, Q, your Crew screen. So uh, hopefully, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, the uh, developers watching this video, so... Put that in, create a work ticket for that because that was a little screw up right there. Uh, can we go back and talk to these guys? So if you've never watched one of my playthroughs before, I tend to be 
very thorough. I try to be very thorough. Uh, maybe even annoyingly thorough. I don't know. I just, one of my favorite things about uh, video games is exploring and seeing what there is to see and discovering things because, uh, you know, sometimes you're rewarded for exploration. And plus, I have always figured that, you know, very talented people worked very hard to make these games and I want to see that they, see what they created. I mean, we're going to walk over here and we're going to take a look at this. By the way, when, when her hand was scanned, did you look at the screen over here, this screen over here? It said her DNA was like something percent some race or species and then something percent human so I, I don't know I don't know what that was sort of something with a K I did not recognize the species and and yes I I love Star Trek I've watched Star Trek all my life but I do not have an encyclopedic knowledge of Star Trek so you know I'm I'm not I don't know everything so these are really nice screens here um like a little map there with a check-in station. You got an elevator there. Systems enabled. Real nice. I do know that these are called Elcar screens. Good so, day, Commander. Oh, 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 good day. Good good day to you. Oh, let me get out of your way. Uh, so I guess this is... This is the Resolute. This is the ship we're going on. Are we on the Resolute right now? I thought we were on the space station. Yeah, the, yeah we're on Starbase 128. We're not on the Resolute yet. Look at this. Tractor beam emitter, 59%. Secondary hull defense grid, 60%. They really need to get to work on that forward torpedo launcher. It's only at 35% right now. However, the warp nacelles are at 95%, so we're getting there. Here is a s profile shot of the Resolute. Repair in progress. We got some arrivals and departures here. Wish I could read those. Doesn't look like I have a zoom in anywhere here. Whoops. That's pretty cool though. Here we've got a storm reports. Got the weather channel here on the Starbase. See, I could run. Here's another profile shot. Here is like a like a map. Strategic applications, command tech center. Expedite initiatives. <laughs> Let's see what's going on here in this room with all these people milling about. So we got uh, the three pips on our collar here. We are a commander just beneath a captain. If I remember my briefing, Commander Armand is a Bolian. So I'm looking for someone with blue, blue skin. skin. Oh, man. Now, even I remembered that Bolians have blue skin. I did. I really did remember that. I didn't need her to tell me that, but you know, person playing this game might not know that. So here's somebody. This is not, this is not Commander Ermont, or whatever the name is we're looking for. But you know, we can talk to him. So we're going to talk to him. Let's. Oh, he's lost. Let's see if we can help him, even though we've never been here before. Are you all right? Yeah, I, I'm just. Well, I'm not sure where my departure dock is. The Resolute's going to leave without me. Look here. The Resolute is leaving from this dock. Ah, huh, you're right. Nerves must be getting to me. Okay, I do not want that guy on my crew. He can't even read a freaking map. Thanks so much, Commander. So uh, he's... Yeah. I don't want him on my crew. <laughs> Let's see if he does show up. No, he doesn't show up. Uh, I I'm liking the looks of this. This uh, It looks very Star Trek The Next Generation. This... Could be a set from the show. I I'm really liking it. Let's see how many people we could talk to. So neither of these two people, it looks like. Look at look at this kind of sidestep. She she likes to strafe. So we can't talk to these people. Could look down there. Oh wow, look, there's even more people down there. I like this. Now I will admit that I want to like this game because I love Star Trek so much. And also I have like, uh, I kind of always root for the underdog and this studio kind of makes me think of an underdog, you know, it's just these, these, this group of people who used to be a telltale and they left and started their own studio and, um, somehow managed to get a license from Paramount to make a Star Trek game. So kudos to them for that, but still it's a very small studio and this is their first game. So I'm really, really rooting for them. So I'm probably going to be, uh, a lot more forgiving. Uh, than you might be. But uh, I, 
I just want to look at the good side of things here. Here's a Starfleet officer. Uh, I'm trying to see how many pips she has on her on her collar, but I can't really tell from here. Let's talk to her. Excuse me. Have you seen a Bolian around here? Yes, sir. Right back there, near the replicator. Huh. Ah, there he is. Thank you. Happy to help, Commander. Okay. Let's see what's going on over here. Replicated meal. Let's examine it. I'll replicate myself a meal once I'm on board. <laughs> okay. Can't talk with any of these people. Now, who's the person with the red skin? I don't remember anybody Excuse with uh, with that color skin in Star Trek. So, any tr Trekkies out there who know what, what race that, what species that person is, by all means, let me know. The Resolute's getting a new first officer. <gasps> Someone from the crew got promoted. No, get this. They're from a different ship. Oh my gosh. Oof. Wonder how the crew feel about that. That makes them look desperate. Is their crew that bad? Yeah, not a good look. Hmm. So these people are saying that it's a bad look that they had to get a first officer from a, from a different ship. And I heard every word, you two. I'm going to remember your faces. But they're probably not even on the Resolute. You're going to the Resolute too? Yeah. Not the ship I was hoping for. Why's that? Well, you haven't heard? Some kind of accident. Their warp core overloaded. Oh, whoa. That's a big deal. They spent six months fixing it up. Was it the captain's fault? That's the rumor. Yeah. Hmm. And, and you don't need me to tell you this, but that's why you explore. Because then you get to hear some things like that that flesh out the game world. So we're learning a little bit about the Resolute and the situation over there. I'm going to walk over here. Pardon me, I'm going to walk in front of you again. And uh, I didn't notice this before, so now we're going to take a look at this for some information. Starbase 128 has four docks. That's all? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know if that's important information, but we now know. So... Um, She's got green skin, so is she from Orion? Is that is that right? People from Orion have green skin. Well, that's the bullion that we're looking for, but let's uh, let's exhaust everything here. Walk around, see if there's anybody else we could talk to. Oh, I can't walk through there. That's a nice invisible wall right there. Can't uh, get through these two. Oh, and I'm sure you noticed that it's at least it sounded to me like the voice actors were the same. We've got the male voice and the female voice here. And then over here, at least to me, it sounded like the same voice actors. And again, I'm okay with that. That's fine. Hell, even even Skyrim uses the same voice actors over and over again. So, you know, it's fine with me. So here's the bullion. Let's speak to Commander Ermot. So we've got the uh, red um, uh, shirt the reddish maroon shirt which means that we're more like command uh he's got the yellow which means he's uh what would that be engineering in the next generation i believe i think that's right right let's talk to this guy welcome to the edge of the galaxy commander rydak I'm Commander Jan Ermott, Operations Officer on the Resolute. Commander? I hope there wasn't too much trouble getting here. Oh, it was fine a bit bumpy, I could take it. Easy for us right now. Yeah, it was fine. I know conditions are less than ideal at the moment. It was perfectly fine. No trouble at all. I'm glad to hear it. We're grateful you were able to come fill our first officer vacancy at such short notice. From everything I've read and everything I've heard, we're lucky you were available to us. Coming hmm. from a premier starship and all. Um, to our little research vessel. What have you heard? What exactly have you heard about me? First in your class at the Academy. Received the Starfleet Award of Valor during the Dominion War. Most recently, Tactical Officer and Chief of Security on the USS Endeavor. You've done your homework. Like I said, we're very lucky. Oh, that's cool. The 
USS Resolute. She may not look like much compared to the bigger ships, but as far as science vessels go, she can more than hold her own. And she doesn't look so bad considering six months ago she was nearly cracked in half venting plasma fighting for her life. It was an accident? The equipment malfunction. An accident suggests fault, but no one's to blame. It was a planned test, but the warp core was pushed beyond its limits. It destabilized the dilithium, there was a runaway reaction, and the warp bubble deformed. We thought we could reach a higher resonant frequency, but it was more than she could handle. Cost us our first officer and 22 of our crew. Hmm. At the end of the day, we're all responsible for each other. Man. That's what it means to be a crew. It's a pretty high price, though. To have lost so many lives. That's a high price to pay. Too high by any estimation. But there's nothing that can be done about it now except get back to work. And make sure it never happens again. Listen. I realize you've known Captain Solana for quite some time. And I'm sure you're ready to bring your best. But I should warn you that when the captain announced you would be the new first officer, there were those who felt it was a mistake, that he should have promoted from within. So you might want to tread lightly at first. Mm, yeah, Until thanks. Until they come to value your contributions as much as he does. Thanks for the heads up. Thank you. Always good to have a sense for what you're walking into. I just thought you ought to know. I appreciate it. Okay. Starfleet has assigned us a high priority mission to the Hotari region. I'll let the captain brief you on board. I know he's eager to see you. Will we be mission ready in time? We have every intention. The crew has been working around the clock to get the ship ready. There's still so much to do. Alright. Oh, W. Oh, I press it? Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, who's this guy? Just the thing. Oh, plasma torch. Okay, so which one of these is a plasma torch? I don't think it's this. Oh, well, pff, there you go. ODN recoupler. Plasma torch. Hyperspanner. And interphasic coil spanner. I mean, I knew all of that before I highlighted it. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's obvious that this is the plasma torch. Yep. Ooh, okay. Clear the corrosion. Eh, which reminds me of um, in Elden Elden Ring when I had to like knock the crud off of the feet of the walking mausoleums. It looks a lot like this. Vaporize. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's that's kind of fun. Little little something there. Kind of like the mini puzzles in so many games, like picking a lock and Skyrim or Fallout. I mean, it's, it's about as simple as you can get. You just kind of got to keep the mouse in that circle. But I'm okay with it. Okay. Oh. And now... Oh, wow, I'm actually... Am I really spinning my mouse? Okay, I did. And then now we do S to pull down. Okay. Oh, man, that thing needs to be replaced. Yep, see? There you go. All right, let's insert it. That. And then we do D and this. Okay. Is that. All right. Good as new. <laughs> the lower deck's nice. Oh, I love that sound effect. thing was totally fried. Is she a trill? Nice work, Carter. Nothing to it, Neely. And not a moment too soon. The boss wants us down in engineering. Like, now. 
All right, now we're supposed to follow her to engineering. Before we do that, I'm going to hit enter because before it said you could hit enter to show uh, how your crew and other people are interacting or reacting to you, I should say. Uh, this is the only thing we know about Ensign Calloway right now. We did read that. Commander Ermot. Jara made a good first impression with Commander Ermot, coming off as inquisitive and appreciative while showing empathy for what the crew of the Resolute suffered. Yeah, I thought I handled that pretty well. Yep. Carter hasn't met anybody yet. All right. So instead of hit enter, uh, apparently um, space works just as well. Uh, we could run. So we're supposed to follow her to engineering. But before we do that, oh, we're going to explore. Let's inspect the shuttle. Whoa, hold on there, buddy. The erosion in there was pretty extreme. Nothing I couldn't handle, though. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, the ptarmigan. Okay. Come on. So, a couple summers ago, I went to the um, Kennedy... No, it wasn't Kennedy. What is it? The, the, the Space Center in Houston? I don't remember what it's called. And they had... Um, the, the Galileo shuttle there. Carter Diaz. It was pretty awesome. Galileo was a shuttle in the original series. It was, it was really cool. So she's going to keep yelling at me till I go over there. But uh, I want to talk to people. Let's talk to the mechanic. Hey, Diaz. Have you Hurry seen up. a hyperspanner around here? I last saw it near the shuttle uh, Tarmigan. I'll let you know. Nope. Oh. Let's go back over to the tarmac again and give it to her while this other person yells at us. <laughs> so this is the the baffin. Yeah, well, get get ready to have time wasted, lady, because I'm just gonna walk around and just help my, myself to the hyperspanner here. Oh, take tool. It's not where that goes. Yeah. Come on now, let's put things back where they belong, people. Maybe we can figure out where you're supposed to be. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, I have to imagine this is the tool she's interested in. We're very excited, so let's run it back over to her. Hello. Oh, hey, there it is. You're a lifesaver, Diaz. Well, I don't know about that, but I try. We should lecture her on putting her tools back where they belong. Um. I was trying to look at his collar. He doesn't have a pip. He has something else on his collar. Oh, here. Look at this. Here's the transporter pad. Oh, look at that. We could look at it. Cool. Kind of low-res textures there, but that's okay. It's not important. So, like I told you, I like to look around. I like to see things, and I think I think you get rewarded for it because you get to interact with other people. You get to see the names of the shuttles, like the Melville there, and I dig that. What's she working on? Let's see, crewman. Everything okay? I dropped a non-ferrous connector between the coils. Move a few of them to find it, and then... Ooh, then another hour of recalibrating. Ouch. I'll leave you to it. Yep, you're on your own. Try not to screw up next time. How's that wall looking? Looking pretty good? Alright, keep an eye on it. Make sure it doesn't change shape or anything. Oh, cool. Oh, we could use... Yes, can oh. you give us some help with the transporter? Yeah, man. What's the problem? We need to test this cargo transporter. I've never been that great with the signal plotting. I got it. No problem. Neat. Select waypoint to create a path through the ionic interference. The line connecting the points will lose stability if it passes through the interference. The yellow bar indicates the stability of your path. When full, you will succeed. Use the mouse to aim and hold left mouse button to select and drag waypoints. Let's do it. Okay, so we need to drag this up here. Maybe, maybe like this. And maybe we could just drag this down here. Oh, there we go. No sweat. Whoa, whoa, hey, hey buddy, get, get off the pad. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Don't touch your vac. Not a word. <laughs> that was funny. Good thing they didn't beam him out into space. <laughs> I got a kick out of that. That was funny. Let's see. Can we talk to this guy? Nope. Storage bay. And then we got this guy over here. He looks kind of sad. Maybe he just wants a moment alone. You okay there, buddy? We can't talk to him. Probe. Oh man. Oh, oh, get in there. Okay. Oh. Oh, these are heavier than they look. <laughs> Makes more sense than zero G. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Dude, just sit there. So clean I can see myself. And you know what? Not half bad. <laughs> Alright, this guy sitting there is cracking me up. He just gives us a thumbs up. Thanks for lifting that heavy probe for me, pal. Alright, let's follow. What's your face here? Oh, what's going on here? What's up, busy engineer? You look... He looks so busy. Don't let LT catch you blocking the quarters like this. We'll clear it up once we finish the delicate work. Good looking out, though. Yep, we're not going that way. We're gonna drive this poor woman crazy. Stopping to gawk at everything there is to gawk at. Yeah? Oh, okay. Not after the retrofit. Bulkhead cuts it off at section two. New computer reroutes. So then... I'm thinking we'll have to do the work in that tube. Then take the turbo lift from section two to section three. Well, wait, there's a subfloor crossover around junction 32E. <laughs> what do you have against using the turbo lift? Nothing. I just like being in the tubes. It's, it's my domain. The tubes are my domain. Oh my gosh. Look at the door. I don't need anything from utilities. Force of habit, I guess. Yeah, it's too worse a habit. Come on, you guys, we gotta clear this stuff up. Come on. Hey, you need any help? Okay, good luck. <laughs> okay. He's gonna ignore us, I guess. Weird. Oh, I love this set. It's like we're on the, on the Enterprise. This is great. Turbo lift. Engineering. I heard the new Exo just arrived. Won't be long before we get underway. I just hope whatever Chovok called us down for it's something good. I can never tell with him. Hard I'd rather not end up degaussing plasma manifolds. Hanging upside down makes me queasy. Orders are orders, Nelly. You know what they say? There are no small missions. Every expedition has a purpose. Even if we don't know what it is yet, We got here before. Lieutenant Commander Chovak. We were just looking for you, Commander. Petty officers Ed Salar, Diaz. I was beginning to think you would be late. We are all hands on deck right now, which means if you are not at your post at the appointed time, I do not have someone to replace you. A yeah. point I have been forced to make to Petty Officer Ed Salar on repeated occasions. Uh, apologies for the delay, Commander. I do not want your apologies. Simply see to it that it does not happen again. So, I don't suppose you <laughs> wanted us down here to check in before we go off duty? Equip yourselves in EV suits to work on the exterior of the hull. I need you to tune the structural integrity field for optimal performance. The subspace distortions and ionic interference we are experiencing are preventing the proper calibration. This ship must be ready to depart shortly, despite the storm. The precise nature of these disturbances are not fully understood. But many systems have been affected by the wide band of emissive activity. Whatever it throws at us, we'll be ready. We've 
got the best chief engineer in the fleet. I am a Vulcan, Mr. Diaz. Flattery is not necessary. <laughs> All that I require is that you do your job. Right now, that entails critical preparations, because long-range sensors show that these disturbances will be more severe at our destination, the Hotari system. You have your orders. Do not delay. Yes, Roger Commander Chobok. All hands on deck. Oh, uh, what's that? All hands on deck. That's what Chobok said. You know what that means? It means this ship isn't ready to go out and the brass know it. So they're throwing every worn body at it. And they're going to leave on schedule. Consequences be damned. You won't get an argument from me, Nelly. Sure seems like everyone's still scrambling. And I get it. When has a relaunch ever gone off without a hitch? But this isn't just any old refit or any old relaunch. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> a lot of new faces coming on board. It's got to be tough coming as a replacement. Mm. That's for sure. Give him a chance. They seem all right. Something that happened six months ago while they were off on another ship? Well, that's nothing to hold against them. Yeah, you're right. I guess getting a little new blood on board doesn't hurt. Hold on. Now there's an old face I didn't expect to see again. Hey, Miranda! You weren't gonna leave without me, were you? Miranda, you're here? We thought you were staying on the Adirondack. Transfer came in at the last minute, so I figured I'd slum it on this bucket of bolts. Looks like you got her back together pretty nicely. I wasn't sure what to expect. I'm gonna take the high road here, pretend you didn't say that, and welcome you aboard. He's a better diplomat than I am. He still owes me a bottle of Saurian brandy. Don't think I forgot. Oh yeah, it's coming back to me now. Maybe Carter can wrestle up that bottle and we can give you a proper welcome. As soon as we wrap up this quick little spacewalk. Pick up the helmet. Here, let me help you. Thanks. So what's the word? Are you back in the security rotation? Yep. Still running with the usual suspects. Whoa. Good to go. See you on the other side. Hmm. Activating magnetic souls. Activate magnetic boots. Let's, uh, oh, here we go. Have you never gets old? Let's go. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> nice. Captain Solano should be here momentarily. So, oh, I thought I was controlling, huh? Let's wait. You'll have to forgive me, I don't know much about Kobliads. But my understanding is you need a steady supply of deridium to keep your cell structure stabilized, or bad things start to happen. And we have plenty of deridium in sickbay, so there's no risk of running out. Thank you. Feel free to make yourself at home. And help yourself to whatever you like from the replicator.
Okay, so now I'm back to controlling. Uh, so I'm playing this pretty straight. I'm sure you've noticed, uh, you know, we get the choices to talk. Uh, there's like, you know, the uh, rah, rah, go team kind of choice. Uh, there's maybe like a sarcastic or a negative choice. Uh, I'm just going to play it straight. Uh, and, you know, apparently as we play the game, you know, our character, these other characters will start to have different feelings towards us. So that's kind of cool. So if you play the game again and you're a total jerk, well, then you can see how people react to you. Uh, Petty Officer Maris, this is Carter, by the way. Miranda felt encouraged by Carter's warm reception when she first arrived aboard the Resolute, holding out hope there might be some chemistry between them. Oh, I see. So she's interested in Carter. And Lieutenant Commander Chovak here. Uh, found Carter to be respectful and responsible when he and Ed Salar were almost late in main engineering. Okay, so we've made a good impression. So I wonder if, like, will their faces change? Will their expressions change if they're not happy with us? You know, I wonder how we'll know if they're not happy with us. So I'm not going to piss somebody off on purpose, but I have to imagine there's going to be somebody we come across uh, later on that no matter how hard we try, we're just going to say the wrong thing. Because it would be too easy to always pick the right choice if you just pick the the friendly or the most business-like choice. So I imagine that we're going to run into somebody that uh, we have problems with. So I'm going to end this episode here uh, because I've actually found a kind of a break in the action. The action being basically watching a movie. Uh, I'm okay with it, though. I like it. I, I, I came into this ex expecting that, that there was going to be very little interaction. And the interaction they have... Uh, it's kind of, some of it's kind of clever. Some of it is kind of silly, you know, like pressing a button to put on your helmet, but, uh, you know, keeps you awake, keeps you engaged. So I'm okay with that. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm really liking it so far. I'm really liking the, the story. What little bit of it we've heard so far. I kind of like the characters. The music is really good. I wonder where the music came from. I don't know if it was made, you know, for this game or whether it's just some kind of like stock, uh, Star Trek music, but, uh, I think it's quite good. I think it's, I actually kind of like it. So, um, yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. Off to a good start. And like I said, I really, really like walking around in here. It really does look like a set from a Next Generation show. And I just freaking love that. I love that look. I just do so much. The Elkar screens and, you know, carpeting and the, and the, uh, these, uh, curved walls. And, uh, you know, replicator on the wall over there and these these funky chairs. I don't know, man. I'm really liking it. And I, I honestly don't think it looks that bad. I, I think it looks fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Man, people just want to complain about things. I think it looks great. I'm having fun so far. Now, let's see here. How do I save the game? Let's see. I go to main menu. And, oh, well, let's see here. Did the game save? So if I just hit play again... It's going to take me back here. Oh, gosh. I'm a little worried. I didn't see an option to save. Okay. So, yeah, we're back here. We'll watch this little part while she... Oh, we're all the way back to You'll this. Me. I don't know much about Kobliads. So, can I skip but this? Understand hmm. The thing is, you need a steady supply of deridium to keep your cell structure stabilized, or bad things start to happen. So, did they just really introduce a whole new race in into so there's no risk Star Trek? Thank you. Feel free to make yourself at home and help yourself to whatever you like from the replicator. So, yeah, I didn't. When I first saw her, I thought Bajoran, but Bajoran have ridges on their nose, not their forehead. Uh, so she, she's she's like Kobliad, and they say that she needs deuterium to keep her energy reserves up or something. So I guess that's just a clever way of having maybe a stamina or a health bar. Probably a health bar, right? How do you explain a health bar? In Star Trek, well, there you go. You make it so that she's this race that requires deuterium. And deuterium, I guess, is going to be the health items for her. So it's pretty clever. It's pretty clever. I really wonder how this kind of thing works, though. I mean, you know, they have this license from Paramount, the owner of Star Trek. Do they have to, like, run it by them and say, hey, we're thinking of introducing a whole new a whole new race to Star Trek? Do they have to get permission or can they just do it willy-nilly? I don't know. But, like I said... I cannot get her to look at the camera. She, she will not look at the camera. She's she's shy. She's looking away. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. I hope you're enjoying it too. Uh, let me know what you think. If you're a Star Trek fan, uh, what do you think of this early play of this game? 
Do you think you'll play it? Um, if you're not a Star Trek fan, but you're watching it just because you watch what I play, what do you think? I'd like to know. Thank you guys for, so much for joining me on this first episode of my playthrough of Star Trek Resurgence. I'm going to be uh, posting a, a video of this every day, except Sunday. Sunday will remain Skyrim Sunday for the time being. So, yeah, make sure you come back. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe so that you are notified whenever I post videos. And uh, if you enjoyed this episode, uh, leave me a like or a comment. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you join me again for the next episode. See you then.